name's Ed, and I'm an assistant curator here at the Franklin Park Zoo. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about invertebrate biology and introduce you to some of the species that we have here. Um, a lot of you may know invertebrates means uh, no backbone, animals without uh, backbone or internal skeleton, and uh, uh, insects are a common uh, example of an invertebrate. Um, other ones that people may not think of are like crabs and uh, lobster. One of the things, one of the common, the common uh, uh, feature of invertebrates is the way they grow. So, um, unlike, uh, say, us, where as we get bigger, our bones grow with us, invertebrates, they have an external skeleton. So when they um, want to grow, or when they have to grow, they have to shed their skin and grow a new one. Um, this is an example of, uh, of a shed from a tarantula, and you'll notice that hatch on the top looks sort of like the top of a tank. Um, that's where the tarantula comes out. So when an invertebrate wants to shed, they uh, suck in a lot of air, and their skin uh, splits along predetermined routes. So all of that around there, that's where all tarantulas will shed from. And so that pops off and the animal will crawl out of it, essentially pulling its body out of the sleeve. And uh, when, it, when it does come out, when it uh, frees itself, they will, they're very vulnerable really small, I mean, not really soft, and uh, they need to stay safe. So they'll stay somewhere sort of quiet, not moving around a lot, until their uh, exoskeleton hardens, and then they can go about their daily duties. Um, so all invertebrates share this, uh, or, yeah, all the, all the insects that I will show you today share this feature. And, um, let me introduce you to a couple of species that we have here on uh, exhibit. And these are uh, two types of roaches. These are called Madagascar hitching, hissing roaches. And um, they're, they're dead, so they are uh, not, not going to escape there. But they, um, hissing roaches, these guys are found in Madagascar. And uh, they are one of the things that's interesting about them is that they're dimorphic. If you look at this one here, the, you'll, you'll see some bumps on the head. Those are indicative of males. And if you look at the antenna, they're a little bit fuzzy, fuzzier than these two are females. And they don't have that raised bump and they've also um, their antenna are less, um, less fuzzy than the males. Um, another type of species that we have here is our, um, so these guys are one of the, one of the largest species, but this is also one of the largest species in the world. These are Brazilian cockroaches and they're different. If you notice between the two, they're uh, different in that they have wings. This is an adult on the left and a juvenile on the right. And the juveniles have wing pads, which uh, you can't quite see. I don't see them on that one, but they get wing pads. And then when in their last molt, they will um, emerge with wings. And uh, that's... Um, that's one of the differences between those. Uh, these guys are omnivorous, as are the other roaches, which means they pretty much eat everything. Um, plants, they'll eat fruit, um, they'll even eat uh, protein material. Um, <clears throat> so one of, the, one of the things that happens, one of the ways the cockroaches stay safe um, a lot of people don't like cockroaches. They hide in the cupboards and things like that. 
And one of the ways that's exactly how they stay safe in the wild. They stay in dark, dark uh, damp areas and uh, it keeps them from being eaten. Uh, they're pretty common in caves. Uh, you find them under logs and things like that. So. Another, uh, one of our other species has a different way of staying safe, and that is uh, through camouflage. These are spiny stick insects. There's two here. And you can see that they don't really look like insects. Uh, as a group, they're called walking sticks. There are a lot of different species of them. Some of them actually do look like um, twigs. We have a species here, at least one more, more I'm sure, in North America that are uh, very twig-like. And these guys are, um, they look more like leaves, more like walking leaves. You can see they, they resemble maybe a curled up dead leaf. Um, both females, you can see the heads here. If you notice their antenna, they're pretty, pretty small. These guys, as um, for their defense, is total uh, camouflage. They just sit there. When they get nervous, I don't know if these guys will do it, um, they'll cling to uh, the branch and sort of sway like the breeze is blowing them. And um, that's one of their um, defenses. It's just to hide in plain sight. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about these guys, the walking sticks, is their eggs. Um, here is Here are some of their eggs here, and if you look at, at one of those, one end has um, so it's sort of a, something protruding out of the end of it. That's called a capitulum. So the, the females will uh, drop the eggs on the forest floor, and ants will come along collect these eggs and take them to their nest. And that capitulum there is uh, it's like a waxy, um, uh, it's a piece of sort of wax, it's, got, it's, it's valuable for them for food. So they'll, they'll take that off and eat it or uh, use it with their colony and then they take the leftover egg that is still intact and they'll put it in their compost and that's perfect um, conditions for the eggs to hatch. So they will, um, and the eggs, when they hatch out after about six weeks, the young will hatch out and they've already got the, um, the ant colony smell on them. So they're sort of camouflaged like that and they can walk through the colony and out into the forest without being attacked. Um, they also, and it, interestingly, you might be able to see, I don't know if we have any currently on exhibit, but the little young, they do look like ants too. They have their abdomen curled up and they walk around and they sort of resemble ants. Um, one other species that we have has a completely sort of a different uh, method of defense. These are um, African millipedes. And I didn't I want you to see them like this when they're out before I try to pick one up because one of their defenses is to curl into a tight coil just like this. And what that does, these, these guys are really quite hard uh, on the surface. But what they're doing is protecting that under, that soft underside, um, it's, there's not a lot of, you know, vulnerable area, but it is where the, where the um, legs join the body, that's, that's their soft area. Millipedes are often grouped with centipedes, and people wonder, um, you know, they, 
may wonder the difference between the two and the, the one of the ways, one of the clues comes with their name. Uh, millipede means thousand legs, centipede means hundred or thousand feet, uh, centipede means hundred feet. So millipedes have more feet than the uh, centipedes do. And that's about the segments. It's how many sets of legs per segment. These guys, millipedes, have two sets per segment. So there are four on every segment versus a centipede, which has uh, just two per segment. Uh, millipedes are harmless. They're detritivores. So they eat a lot of um, just rotting things, um, fruit, anything basically that's rotting. They're important uh, recyclers for the forest. Centipedes are, are more predatory. Uh, equally important as control, but um, so these guys are one of the, oh, that's so their main defense is to curl up into a coil and to be sort of unavailable. Um, the second defense they do is they, they exude a, sort of a noxious fluid bet from between their, th um, their um, segments. This guy's not doing it, which is good, because it does stain your hands. Um, but they, uh, they will do that, and that's distasteful for uh, animals. It's also, it could actually burn some insects. Um, so it can be quite a, uh, quite a defense strategy. One of the, some animals will use that as a means of, um, of uh, anti-parasite. So a bird may pick a millipede up, rub it on its body, and use that, um, the chemical that they exude to help keep them free of parasites. So those are a few of the species that we have. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, I'll answer them if I can. Can you just mention where we are at the zoo right now, actually? Because this might not look familiar to a lot of folks. Yeah, well, we're in one of the behind the scenes areas in, uh, in one of our holding rooms. And is the same true of cockroaches? A lot of people don't don't like them or are scared of them, but they play an important part of our ecosystems, right? They do, yeah. Cockroaches are also recyclers and um, they have, they definitely have a role in the environment. There's over 1,700 species worldwide. We have cockroaches around here outside. Uh, you turn over a log and you'll find uh, cockroaches. They provide food for other animals, but they're also, uh, they help break down nutrients, so they're important in that way. And all of these guys are on exhibit here in Bird's World, or elsewhere at the zoo? Yeah, the two, the two um, cockroaches are, the millipedes are not currently, uh, the, but the, we do have a tarantula as well. Cool. well I think we're, about out of time, so if we want to just do a sign off. Okay. Well, I appreciate you joining me, and I hope I was able to answer some questions. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our some of our invertebrates. <laughs>